Today we're going to talk about foliar fertilizer use in crops and there are a couple main reasons why we wanted to discuss this today. Number one, a lot of people didn't get their fertility out last fall or this spring. And then the other reason why we want to talk about it is, quite frankly, we haven't had the best success or I should use the word consistent success spraying foliar fertilizer. So we want to talk a little about how you can get more out of your foliar products. First of all, what are some of the things that have led to foliar fertilizer applications not working? And I think about spray pH. What's the pH of that water that you're putting with the fertilizer? We want to see you get that pH down into the five to six range. So how are you going to do that? There are some water treatment products you can use to lower the pH and lower it pretty quickly and very inexpensively. One other thing that's led to problems is not putting on the right nutrients. I don't know how many farmers I've talked to that say, well, I put this blend of nutrients out there and, and uh, it didn't really give me a big response. And I said, well, what were you short in? And they just kind of look at me like, well, I don't know. Plant just looked a little uh, not as green right, as I'd like so it. So what we want you to do is do some plant tissue analysis and don't just do it in one day do it over a period of time and then you can kind of see what you're finding for movement. So when the crop is really small, start then. And by the time it gets a little bit bigger, you can see, okay, I was short, short, short. Ooh, okay, now I understand. I better get some more of this particular nutrient on. All right, let's talk about some of the other things that we've seen help foliar applications work a little bit better. Let's start with a fulvic acid or something to drive those nutrients into the plant. Well, a lot of the high yield farmers that we work with around the country are using fulvic acids. Another thing that farmers are using is plant growth hormones. And it's interesting today, you will find in some of the foliar fertilizer products, there are plant growth hormones in there, and they might not even tell you there are plant growth hormones in there. It might just be in the inert ingredients. But you gotta remember, in order for that foliar fertilizer to really work well, you've gotta have the right balance of hormones and enzymes in that plant. And it's hard for that plant to do that sometimes and you put a big dose of fertilizer on. So that's why you're gonna find some of these hormones and even enzymes going along with foliar fertilizers more and more in the future. Well, there's also been a big difference with which nutrients you're choosing and what form they're in. There are a lot of different forms that a nutrient may come in. So uh, maybe you're talking about zinc, for example. Are you using a zinc oxide? Are you using a zinc sulfate? Zinc uh, what kind of chelation process is in the product? Uh, there's a wide difference of products out in the environment. So, so, so if you're just looking at cost and, well, hey, I can buy zinc, the cheapest per gallon in this product, that's probably not the right way to buy. So here's what we'd encourage you to do. Maybe if you say, boy, it's between these two products, all right, go spray them both. And then do tissue tests before and do tissue tests after. And then you can see which one actually got into the plant, which one actually increased the levels. Well, that's probably the one you want to use in the future. Well, and you take those products to yield as well. And if you split a field, for example, you can say, oh, okay, uh, this half of the field where I used this particular product yielded three bushels more. Boy, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out which product is probably the best going forward. Here's another thing you can consider. Are you greening up the plant or are you actually helping yield? For example, if you have iron deficiency chlorosis, yes, you can throw some foliar iron on, and yes, it will green up the plant. But a lot of times we don't see the yield gain. We see much more yield gain when that iron is used pre-emerge or especially in furrow. All right, we've mentioned quite a few things. Let's, let's talk about specific products and, and what we're doing on our farm. You can do different things. In our area, what, what we're using to lower our water pH is a product called Water Right. Uh, so we'll, we'll put water right in. It only takes a few ounces. It's not a big deal. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do it, but you really do need a pH tester. And if you either get some strips or just a little testing unit, it's really cheap, it's really quick and easy to do. Yeah, and you don't have to do that with every load. Once you see, okay, what's my water? How much does it take of whatever you're gonna mix in there to lower the pH? Then just do that the next time too, and, and you're done. Okay, Brian mentioned a lot of people like to use some fulvics. We've been using a product called Nutex EDA that has enzyme-driven activity to drive those products into the plant. We've had really good luck using Nutex. In terms of a blended fertilizer product, we've been using AC97 quite a bit. That's got a bunch of micronutrients in there. In addition to some plant growth hormones, we've had good success with that, but there are a lot of good fertilizer products out there too. Again, we just encourage you, do some tissue analysis, try to figure out and even use some common sense and say, okay, I'm looking at this kind of yield gain and I've only been applying a small amount of these nutrients. Maybe I should try a little more fertilizer and especially with certain specific nutrients. The more specific you can get, usually the better chance you have for a gain. We're talking a lot about foliar nutrition, but we can't forget about weed control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.